How do you do, Pooter? It's your favorite comedy duo, Alexis and Johnny. We have some very important topics for you today, especially those of you who are 18 and older. First off, we have a segment concerning voting, or more specifically, why should we care about it? Honestly, I refuse to vote for that Joe fella. Odeo or Negus? Joe Mama! I do believe that teens should care about politics. I do not believe that teens need to care about politics. Obviously teens should care about voting. I mean, politics affects all of our lives. Well, yeah, they impact us all, but what is my one vote going to do in a sea of hundreds and millions of other votes? That could be true, but if everybody ends up having that mindset and not voting, then there could be a huge difference in the election results. Well, what about if I don't live in a swing state? I mean, obviously California is always going to vote blue and Wyoming is always going to vote red. Why does my vote matter if no matter what, the majority will always vote the same? Even if your vote does not change the whole election, what it can do is contribute to your demographic. If you're a minority or part of a certain demographic and you vote a certain way and others do as well, that's going to make that politician that you voted for want to cater to your demographic even more. Well, even so, what if I don't support either of the candidates? After all, it seems like to, it, they always seem to end up as older and less relatable people. Well, the reason why almost all of the presidential candidates are so old is because the older generations, age 65 to 74, are almost all voting, about 75% of them. And people ages 45 to 64 make up more than a third of all voters. While for the younger people, ages 18 to 24, only 50% of them are voting, and they're only making up about 9% of the votes. The reason most politicians are older is because the older generations are the ones that are actually voting. Well, that's just because they have more time on their hands. What if I just don't have the time to properly research all the candidates and make a final decision? You don't have to completely read everything about every candidate. After reading a bit about the candidates, you'll likely find them that you agree with fairly quickly. And a vote for a candidate you do agree with is better than not voting at all. And the actual voting part usually takes less than 10 minutes, and you can even mail in your vote. There's really no reason to not vote if you can. It's not funny anymore! I know it's not funny anymore! Uh, it's just... Mm. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Now. With that you hopefully you care about voting, we are going to tell you how to register to vote. Hey, this is Jack. Election day is coming up, and before it's too late, you should get your votes in. If you're like me and just turn 18, I want, I want to show everyone real quick how you can register to vote and some other sources you can use too. First, go to this website called USAGov. This site holds a lot of important information on voting and other governmental services. Once you're at the site, you can find a tab for voting registry and click on it, how to register to vote. How to register to vote. Once you're at the site, you can find a tab for voting registry and click on start your registration on vote.gov. Once you click on it, you listen to a new tab where you can register to vote. On this page, you can see some tabs on some important information. If you have any questions like how to get a voter's registration card or a specific state deadlines to vote, then check out some of these tabs. At the very top of the page, you'll see a drop down bar that allows you to choose what state you live in. Of course, for us, this will be Colorado, and I'm going to press now, find out how to register. It will then take you to a new tab with the proper information on how to register. I unfortunately can't go over the website itself, but just take it slow, and if you need help, ask either a guardian or friend. If you want some more inf information on state-specific laws, you can head to ncsl.org. They have a list of state-specific requirements for you to follow. There's also FVAP, aka uh, Federal Voting Assistant Program. FVAP is meant to be for military or overseas citizens to allow them to vote. Alright, that's all I have for today. This is a quick reminder that online voting ends on October 3rd. Get your votes in now. Lastly, we have a segment about the Blue Book and, more importantly, the Free School Lunch Bill. On November 8th, few registered voters out there will be able to vote either yes or no to the Free lunch bill. 
or Proposition Double F. Here's Richard with some more important information on the bill. When it comes to voting, you can vote via ballot or in person. There are many different places you can vote in Fort Collins alone. Some of those include Elks Lodge, which is located at 1424 East Mulberry Street. The other ones are Fort Collins Habitat for Humanity, 4001 South Taft Hill Road, Fort Collins Police Services, which is 2221 South Timberline Road, Harmony Library. When you receive the blue book or the ballot book, you will notice on the front it shows you when the election day is and when the ballots need to be mailed in by. When you start going through the blue book, you will notice the table of contents and the ballot quick ballot reference guide, which basically states each and every bill that is trying to be passed this year. And it has a quick yes or no on what each bill means and what voting yes or no means on each one. The bill I will be talking about today is Proposition FF. It provides a healthy school meal for all students for free. The proposition makes households that make over $300,000 a year pay a federal income tax. Voting yes on the amendment creates a program to provide access to free meals to public schools for students in Colorado. It also increases taxes for households with over $300,000 in federal adjusted gross income. Voting no on the proposition means that the current method of funding school and the current method of funding school meals, which provides free meals from households with incomes below th certain thresholds, will remain unchanged. What does the measure do? The beginning of the 2023 and 2024 school year is when it will go into effect. At the beginning of 2024 and 2025, the program will provide grant funding to school meal providers to purchase products grown, raised, and processed in Colorado to include in school meals. It will increase wages and provide stipends for employees who prepare and serve school meals and will receive training equipment and technical assistance. Who can participate in the program? Any school meal provider can participate in the program. There are currently 183 school meal providers in Colorado. On table two, you can see what each household would pay if Proposition FF was passed. You can see that households that make up to $300,000 will have to pay $813. And if you make $500,000, you will have to pay $923. And if you, have to, if you make $1 million or more, you'll have to pay $1,166. If you make below $300,000, you will not have to pay any taxes for that. Well, Pooter, that's our show for today. For you seniors out there, go register, go vote, and... And... Say the line or you don't get the money. Uh, oh, uh, and, and go, go Pooter! Pooter.